Welcome to a, another episode of the KNA Football Podcast. Week two is in the past, almost, barring tonight's games. But so all of the Sunday night games and Thursday night games are behind us. So me and Austin are here to recap the week, tell you everything important that happened in the games. Should be a fun time. If you missed anything in yesterday's action, we'll, we'll get you caught up to speed on that. Should be a good time. This is KNA Football. All right, Austin, so we are two weeks now down in the NFL season. Yeah. Only 16 to go. Unfortunately, only 16 more weeks left. But we can't look forward. We've got to be happy that we're in the moment right now. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, a lot of craziness yesterday. Yeah, what was this week? This was ridiculous. Yeah, it was the week of comebacks. Yeah. Last week there was a lot of upsets. This week, still some upsets, but also a lot of... Stupid, crazy comebacks. Yeah. So, sure. you just want to jump right into it? Yeah, let's jump right in. Yeah? Right. yeah? go for it. So, we already talked about Thursday night, Chargers and the Chiefs. The Chiefs pulled off the win, however yeah. you want to call that. Maybe a couple calls here and there that didn't go uh, the Chargers way, but... So, that's football for you. Yeah, if you want to hear about that one, go back to Friday's pick em episode. We talked about that in the beginning yep. of the episode. So, we're going to jump straight into yesterday's games. First one we'll talk about, Bengals and Cowboys. We both had the Bengals winning, and we were both wrong, and the Cowboys won. So, yeah, I don't have any idea how they did that. How on earth does a Cooper Rush-led offense beat the reigning AFC champions, Super Bowl runner-ups? They allegedly upgraded their offensive line for like seventy million dollars on that offensive line. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> and like who knows where that seventy million dollars went because Joe Burrow was sacked six times yeah. yesterday. Which is ridiculous for saying that you upgraded your offensive line. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's still a little too early in the season to call the Bengals like frauds or a one year wonder. Yeah. But I think Super Bowl hangover is definitely a thing and yep. it's showing right now. I th- I'm, I think it's too early in the season to say like the Bengals are the Bengals are done. Like, count them out. They're not a good team. Like, they're still a good team. They got Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. I think they'll figure it out. But yeah, they might not go. I mean, Super Bowl like they did last year. They clearly their offensive line still isn't there. They mm-hmm. still need to upgrade on the offensive line. And you can't be giving up twenty points to Cooper Rush. Twenty points might not be a lot, but the Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, it is. That's a lot of points <laughs> yeah. to give up to a backup quarterback. So, I mean, there's probably a little concerns. If I'm a, a Bengals fan, I'm a little concerned. You should be, should be two and zero. Yeah, Evan McPherson be. messing it up for you last week to, against the Steelers, and now you just played a backup quarterback and got kind of manhandled for the majority of the game. So, yeah, I'm a little worried if I'm a Bengals fan, but yeah, right now I'm looking pretty smart for saying the Bengals. We're a last year kind of team, and this year they aren't going to be as good. Yeah, looking pretty good right about now. It's a little early. It's still it's still only two weeks in, but yeah, totally turn it around. But right now I'm looking good. Yeah. And then the next game, I know you're a little oh, the sore subject. Yeah, I know you're a little have you're a little upset up. about this one, but we do have to talk about it. Yeah. The Jets and the Browns. Yeah. Jets Browns, man. We walked into that one. I personally walked into that one thinking that we had that one in the bag. I think, I think everyone walked in. Everyone, this one. even Jets fans, walked in there knowing <laughs> the Browns had that one in the bag. Uh, Jacoby Brissett played really, really well. Uh, Nick Chubb played. Yeah. Oh, okay. For the majority you... of the game, yeah, Jacoby yeah, yeah. Brissett okay. played really well. I'll let you talk. Nick Chubb played really, really well. Like, overall, the Browns played really good. And then the last two minutes of the game happened, and we absolutely blundered. Everything away. We let um, Joe Flacco, of all people, march down the field and score, get an onside kick, score again. And then Jacoby Brissett, you know, threw the interception that inevitably lost us the game with 20 seconds to go. People are saying that Nick Chubb shouldn't have scored that last touchdown, that he should have gone down at the one. I hear it a lot. They should have gone down at the one and that whatever else, then we waste out the clock and win the game. I mean, whatever. In the moment, who's going to stop at the in the, one? Right, in the moment. You're no not going to think thinking, that you're going to Oh, I'm going to stop game. at the one and we're going to chew the clock. Like You're like, oh, we're up by like 
thirty at this point. There's no way we lose. Yeah. So you score the touchdown, and they sayonara. So I don't blame Nick Chubb. It's just, it's an unfortunate loss. It is what it is. We'll regroup and move on. Right now, we are not at the bottom of the division. We're tied for first <laughs> with three other teams or yeah. with two other teams. The whole AFC North lost yesterday. Yeah, it did, and that's good for us. <laughs> I mean, it would have been nice if we would have won, taken the top spot there. But it is what it is. It's only week two. A lot of room for improvement. Mm-hmm. Garrett Wilson looked great. Oh, he did. Jets. He had two touchdowns. He had the the go ahead touchdown, and then yeah. he had the first touchdown of the game. I noticed the Jets targeted him a lot. So as they should. I mean, yeah, he's I'm my our opinion their best receiver. Yeah, and I think it's great for the Jets. They're targeting their best receiver, but I think it's great for Garrett Wilson to this early in his career get all those targets, and mm-hmm. then it'll help him get better throughout his career and become like eventually, hopefully, a superstar receiver for the Jets. Something that they haven't had in like ever. <laughs> they ever had a good receiver. <laughs> a long time. So I think the Jets they played a great. I mean, they stuck with the Browns, and everyone expected them to get blown out. Yeah. So, I mean, props to that good game planning there. And yeah. then Joe Flacco played pretty good. Played pretty good. Yeah. I mean, he brought him back. I think the uh, Jacoby Brissett, he made a couple of mistakes towards the end yeah. of the game, which shows why he's just a backup quarterback. Right. He is just a backup. That's what people need to remember, is he's not who we're supposed to have it, the number yeah. one. He's the backup guy. He's playing well for a backup guy. Mm-hmm. You can't fault him for that. Yeah. yeah. I did see, like, when the Browns scored and had like their 13 point lead with them two minutes to go, they had a 99.9% chance, like a VPI, whatever it's, whatever yeah. it's called, 99.9% chance to win the game. And then obviously the Jets got the ball and went down. And right as they're scoring, my dad said, This is where we blow it. And then the Jets score. And then a beautiful onside kick by the Jets. That was, I mean, it was a great kick. Yeah. And then drive down and score again. And, yeah, at the end of the day, the Jets team just their special teams unit just outdid ours. Missed we missed the field goal. They got the onside kick. Their special teams unit just did better than ours. Is what it is. Credit where credit's due. The Jets played well in the last two minutes. Yeah, you need all three. Uh, yeah, you need all three of the game to win. Yeah, and of course, Cade York misses the field goal now. But then last week he couldn't <laughs> miss the fifty-eight yard field goal. But you know, yeah, we should have trotted him out when we were like on our side of the fifty. He would have nailed that. He would have <laughs> the won announcer the game. said, "They said I know they're like, they're it's only a seventy-two yarder. He could kick it now. He's all, it's only it'd be about a seventy-yarder." And I was like, <laughs> I, know. "I get it that he made this field goal last week, but there's no way that he's gonna kick a seventy-yard field goal. That would, that would destroy the current <laughs> that would have killed record. the record. Oh my goodness!" But yeah, all right. Well, that's enough talk of the Browns. I'm gonna start crying here in a second. So let's move on to your pride and joy, the uh, Panthers Giants. I'll, I'll give you the reins on this. Yeah, one. go ahead. I have strong opinions about this one. Uh, once again, the Panthers started slow. They did. They started giving it to McCaffrey a lot more in the first half, which is, mm-hmm. I mean, great. They learned from their mistakes and started giving it to him more. DJ Moore was barely targeted, which shocked me. He had a rookie corner on him for most of the game. He was targeted four times, and he had like three catches for like 35, 40-something yards and a touchdown. I don't understand why you don't target him more if he's feasting on that matchup. But each catch was 35. Something. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. it was all in one drive, too. Like, DJ Moore owned that drive. He was great. And then they're done targeting him. And my thoughts are Matt Rule is the worst coach in the league. We, me and you talked about this last night and earlier today. Good teams, good rosters. It doesn't matter if you have a bad coach. The Browns roster, uh, back when they had Freddie Kitchens, is very similar. You could argue it was better back then than it is now. It was very yeah. similar, the Browns roster now and back then. And they had Freddie Kitchens then, and they were awful. And now they have a competent coach, and they're good. So a good coach makes a team, a bad coach makes a team awful. And Matt Rule, the Panthers have a, a solid roster, like a roster capable of winning games or squeaking into the playoffs. But if you have a head coach who can't game plan or scheme during the week, he's focusing on, on during the week on... On Baker getting his cadence right with the center so he can catch the snaps. Instead of game planning and game planning against the defense and getting ready to stop Saquon or stop Daniel Jones from running, he ran all over the Panthers as a quarterback who's not even supposed to be a mobile quarterback. Right. Like, I don't understand why you're not game planning around that. And then the Panthers, they signed and traded for a lot of, like, 
solid rotational receivers. They traded for LaVisca Chenault. They got Terrace Marshall in the draft, who's supposed to be like a sleeper rookie receiver from last year. He was hurt. So now this is his year to like show out. He played the same 11 guys the entire game on offense. He didn't rotate anyone out. They got Rashard Higgins from the Browns, who has the most chemistry with Baker. He never even seen the field any game this season. Like, why aren't you rotating these guys in that you're trading for during the season? Like, there's no point in wasting these roster spots if you're going to play the same 11 guys. Yeah. So it makes me not even excited. To, like, obviously, I'm still going to watch the Panthers. I'm still going to root for them and scream at the TV. And, like, you know, it's not, nothing's going to make the me not do Caden that. Shebang. Yeah, that's what I get for being a Panthers fan. But I have zero faith in the team to win a game until Matt Rule's fired. For some reason, if he's on the team until the end of the season, they will go 0-17, and there's not a doubt in my mind. I have no faith in him. Like, it's getting to the point where once they lose with Matt Rule, I'm mad because I'm mad. How am I going to say this? I'm mad that they lost, but I'm not mad. I'm not more mad, mad that Matt Rule got a loss. I'm more mad that Matt Rule is on the team still. Like, literally, Panthers fans yesterday, all over social media, were calling just hashtag fire Matt Rule, hashtag fire Matt Rule. Like, it was going crazy everywhere. And then the Panthers came out today and said Sunday if next Sunday against the Saints if they look bad and they they play like they have the last two weeks Matt Rule's gone Sunday night so obviously I'm going to watch the game and root for the Panthers and all but if they lose there is a little bit of a win and Matt Rule's gone I think once he's gone we'll be fine we have a solid roster we can win some games probably won't make the playoffs after an 0-3 start but if Matt Rule's gone it's a step in the right direction congrats to the Giants for winning but I mean you're playing Matt Rule it's kind of a free win yeah. Get ready, uh, Ben McAdoo. Probably going to be the head coach in Carolina next week. <laughs> two weeks. In two weeks, you're going to be the head coach in Carolina. Fingers crossed. All right, so now back away from our two teams now. Done with the sadness. Into some more entertaining games. Yeah. The Dolphins and the Ravens was crazy. Crazy game. Lamar Jackson just took the record. For most hundred yard rushing games for a quarterback, just Did took that from Michael yeah. Vick for that game yesterday. Yeah, so he went crazy. The Baltimore Ravens looked nice, they looked good, and then they kind of not necessarily blundered it away, but the Dolphins, the Dolphins, yeah, the Dolphins came back and they, you know, ended up winning with their speed. Tua didn't look terrible. He looked great. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he didn't about. look terrible. He looked great. It's, he's going to... You're if, such a hater. If he keeps playing like this, I'm going to actually have to start picking you the Dolphins to win. You are such a hater. You know, I think Tua... Tua's probably the most happy out of any people in the world about this game. He threw six touchdown passes. I think he... I mean, he deservingly silenced all the haters. I still can't believe people are like, Tua's not a good quarterback. Ravens are a very good team. They have a great defense, great secondary, and he's mm-hmm. out here throwing six touchdowns making a great 21-point comeback. I mean, granted, he do, does have the two fastest receivers in the league, but you still got to be able to get it there. He threw great, like a bomb to Tyreek Hill to take the lead at the end of the game. I mean, you got to be a good quarterback to make that throw. People say he doesn't have the arm strength. I mean, he got it there. He, yeah. If he doesn't have the arm strength, why didn't the Ravens go pick it off? Yeah. I think, I mean, I've, I've said before, I'm kind of high on the Dolphins this year. I don't think Tua's as bad as a lot of people say he is. I think he's pretty good, and I think he showed it yesterday. I still think the Ravens are good, but I think the Dolphins are really being slept on by people with their speed on offense and also defense. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're going to force me to start picking them on Friday's episodes. It's going to be really unfortunate. Right. Oh, but yeah, oh, by the way, I picked the uh, Dolphins for that one, and Austin picked the Ravens. Yeah. So. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, oh, on the, on the first, on the front, on the top row, me and Austin both <laughs> picked the Chargers. We were wrong. We both picked the uh, Bengals. We were wrong. wrong. We both picked the Browns. Wrong. And we both picked the Panthers, and we were both wrong. Incredible. So, Incredible finally, statistics. I get the Dolphins one right. Austin still has none right going into our one. If, two, if you're three, four, if you're gonna look game. if you're gonna look ahead at the ones that I ended up getting right, you're gonna have to go all the way down to the <laughs> third row, the Rams game, until you find one that I got right. Yeah, Austin's not very great at this picking. We're, we're bringing it back. <laughs> it's, it's a week of comebacks. Next week, yeah. all mine. All right. Yeah, this next one I'm really happy about because I kind of called it. 
true. You did actually call this one. <laughs> I said that the um, lions were going to kind of like own and like kind of looks like destroy Washington, which yeah. I mean, ninety nine percent of the game they did. Washington tried to you know go with the trend of all the games yesterday and tried to mount a comeback, and they did. They got within nine, and then they missed an extra point, which kept it out of out of uh, one score game. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, good job, Lions. They played great. Amon Ross St. Brown yeah. looks incredible. He went crazy. He did great towards the end of last season, and he's looked great again this year. They're a two-headed running back monster. DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams are both looking incredible. Jared Goff looks like a competent quarterback. Crazy. Uh-huh. Carson Wentz had a good game. But, yeah. I mean, well. so we, we've hated on him, but he's looked all right. Shockingly, it's incredible how much uh, Jared Goff and Carson Wentz actually look like good quarterbacks this year. But I just think the Lions are a better team than Washington. Oh, for sure, yeah. I was just, you know, thinking Washington had the momentum after last week's win. They'd come in swinging, maybe pull out a win. They got somewhat close, didn't get close enough. At the end of the day, yeah, the Lions are the better roster. They're a more solid team. They will be better this year. Are they going to make the playoffs or get any more close? No, but they're a lot better than they were last year, and I'm sure it feels great being a Lions fan right now after mm. so many years of being yeah. bad. I mean, I they look they're a really up and coming team in my opinion. They got a lot of young, good young pieces and a super good. I love their coach. He's crazy, and I yeah, he's crazy, <laughs> but he's fun. Yeah, I, this was a really fun game to watch. There was a lot of points scored for fantasy purposes too. I think every fantasy player in this game got at least double digit points. I mean, yeah, it was just a really fun game to watch. The two teams that haven't been great le- recently. Lions, obviously, the feel good story have sucked for so long yeah. now. Second Might be week decent. in a row that Carson Wentz is making me regret not start him in fantasy. <laughs> tell you what. Oh, don't even get me started. I had Tua on my bench, and he Dude, got me 40 points. And I started so I started sad. Aaron Rodgers over him, who got me a whopping 16. Yep. I had Aaron Rodgers. I mean, thankfully, I still won. Wentz. Shout out to, um, shout out to, um, shoot, um, Gabriel Williams? Davis for being out tonight on Monday Night Football, oh. <laughs> securing me the dub. Shout uh, out to, uh, our co-producer, Mikey Covens, for giving me not one but two wins in two different leagues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game. This makes me really upset because <laughs> yeah, this one. I ridiculous. said last week that the Jags and Colts game. You were like, oh, no, I don't even need to talk about this. Colts, I did say that. I was Colts, thinking about that. Easy dub. Like, don't even talk about it. And I was like, hold on, the Jags are gonna make this a game, or at least like they're either gonna make it close or win. I do not have faith in this Colts team. Not saying I have faith in the Jags, but I have no faith in the Colts. And I really think the Jags can easily pull this off or make it at least close. My gut was telling me to pick the Jags, but in my mind I was like, I'd be an idiot if I picked the Jags to be the Colts. I mean, they've been the worst team in the league for two years straight. I'm like, I can't. And what did they do? They beat the Colts 24-0 to and completely owned them in every aspect of the game. Yeah. I don't understand at all how the Colts lost like on paper the Colts should be one of the best teams in the NFL they have one of the best rosters they should be one of the best teams in football but for some reason they are now 0 and 2 no 0 1 and 1 0 1 and 1 sorry they're just basically 0 and 2 arguably the two worst teams in the league this year will be the Jags the Texans and then maybe the Panthers if they keep Matt Roll you can put them there too but they tied the Texans, and they lost. They got obliterated by the Jags. Yeah. That's a really bad look for Matt Ryan and the Colts. Yeah, it's really bad. We're only two weeks in. So, again, it doesn't mean a whole bunch. I mean, it has consequences later on when you start mm-hmm. getting further towards the playoffs. But, you know, you're two weeks in. You have plenty of time to turn things around and start winning games and be a contender. But it doesn't look good when you look when you lose to the team that has had back-to-back number one overall picks. No, it's not. But I did see a stat. The Colts haven't beat the Jaguars in Jacksonville in like seven years. Just crazy. Well, Jags haven't won in America well, in however, <laughs> however long. No. They did now. Yeah, they did now. Yeah. Whoa, well, that's crazy. They, did now. This is, <laughs> they won in America. Look at that. Congrats. Welcome to the home man. Queen dies. <laughs> they win in America. Oh, my. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Next game's Bucks Saints. Bucks Saints. It was a boring game. It was really boring. There was no offense involved. Nope, it was all defenses. I think the highlight of the game was the fight. 
How about the game? What's the fight? Mike <laughs> Evans and Marshawn Lattimore got in a brawl, and Mike Evans is now suspended for a week. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to sit him. Remind me to sit him. Yeah, so seriously. I'll, I'll end up starting him. Just like you started Michael Pittman. Genius move by me. I ended up winning, though, anyways. But yeah, so did Lattimore get suspended at all? No. He just kicked out of that game? Yeah. Yeah. So Mike Evans suspended. Um, I don't really know what was said that created the heat between them. I know that Tom Brady was saying something to a Saints. Or no, Tom Brady was arguing with the ref. Saints defender said something to Brady. Brady said something back. And then they just started fighting. Yeah. No, lot, uh, Mar- Mike Evans came in and just blew oh, him yes, up. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah. He's got kind of anger issues. He's, he's done mm-hmm. that before to Lattimore, too. But, I mean, Saints lost this game because Jameis Winston's going to Jameis. And he threw <laughs> Jameis a pick six. Jameis, though. You can take Jameis out of the Bucks. You can't take the Bucks out of Jameis. He threw another yeah. touchdown to the Bucks. I mean... Yeah, he did. did. Go Jameis. He did. And then this one I was a little upset about. Yeah. Steelers and Patriots. I thought there was no way in the world that the Steelers lose this game. I thought their defense would just dominate the Patriots. It wouldn't even be a contest. I was wrong. Yeah, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Did not watch this game. Didn't have time to watch the highlights. So I have no clue what happened in this game other than the Patriots won. Well, yeah, I was watching Red Zone. So I was up in my parents' room. Because my dad was watching the Browns game downstairs, and I was like, I don't really care. So I had, I had the Panthers-Giants game on the laptop, and then on the TV I had Red Zone, which is like flashes from game to game, yeah. you know, like highlights the stuff. And this game was rare. Oh, man, my throat just like went out on me. <laughs> this game was rarely on the TV because there was nothing to really talk about. There, it was low scoring. There wasn't much. It was kind of lame from what I could tell. But, I mean... Steelers offense really is questionable. Yeah. But so was the Patriots offense. No other offense did much, but Steelers, I did see, were coming back towards the end, but the Patriots were able to pull it off. I don't think the Steelers are that good. Not high on the Steelers at all. It shocks me that they have as many wins as they do. They shouldn't have won last <laughs> no, they week. They shouldn't have. But regardless, you know, congratulations to the Patriots for walking away with a win. Probably not going to be. Very many of those for them this year, based yeah. on how they've been playing. So take them where you can get them. You know, I was, I was, I was kind of mad about this game too. Not just, just, I'm not high on the Patriots, and I don't like Mac Jones. I, I just think he's boring and lame. Like I just, I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it. Just Patriots, not just because of Tom Brady he hasn't even been on their team in a while. I just, mm-hmm. they shouldn't, they shouldn't have won. Like it was such a lame game. Like, I don't know. It was just. Caden doesn't like lame games. Take the defenses off the field so you can just throw right. them That's points. why I don't like watching the Panthers games because it was lame yesterday. But All right, this one is kind of funny. Falcons yeah. and Rams. Falcons and Rams. Rams jumped out to a huge lead. They jumped out to a 28-3 lead. <laughs> but then Crazy. they almost pulled a Falcons. I know. The Falcons could have erased everything if yes, they would have I undone saw this that. thing and it was like 28-3 curse was this close to being broken. Like Ever since that Super Bowl, 28-3. They've choked game after game, and all they needed was to reverse that, and they needed to come back 28-3. And then the curse would be broken, and they would never choke a game again. And they were this close. <laughs> they they, they was, came man. all the way back, came down to the last drive, and then Marcus Mariota slightly overthrew his receiver in the end zone. And then, I mean, Jalen Ramsey made a good play and got the interception to seal it, but they were this close, yeah, they man. Were really close. I was like, oh. But thing about that is, is we've said over and over again that the Falcons are not good and they should be very bad this year, especially, you know, their offense should not be good. Yeah. Um, but that says a lot about the Rams, that they couldn't hold the lead. Mm-hmm. They almost choked it. And then they also got obliterated by the Bills last week. Yeah. Now, the Bills haven't played yet this week, so we don't know if it was the fact that the Rams are bad and the Bills you know, are mediocre and they won or if it's the Bills are really good. I think it's that the Bills are good. I do too. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that they're oh, good. You're talking, I'm going to pull up their score right now. I'm kind of interested. Yeah, do that. But yeah, the Rams, for defending Super Bowl champions, they should be doing a lot better. What's the score? It's 7 7. The Bills just scored to tie the game. Really? Yeah. I wonder how the Titans scored. My, my, I bet money on Derrick Henry. Yeah, well, because they run the ball 45 times a game with Derrick Henry because they have no one to throw it to. That kind of makes me sad that they scored because I have the Bills defense. Oh, well. Doesn't matter that much. Already won that league. But yeah, it says a lot more about the Rams than it does the Falcons. Um, even though 
you know, congrats to the Falcons for almost making it a game. Hold on. This this has to be a glitch in the app. The Titans even had even ha- haven't even had the ball yet. And they haven't gotten a pick six or something either. Okay, so I think it's seven nothing and this app is just like Hey Siri, what is the score of the Bills Titans game? It's seven seven. Okay. Whatever. We'll figure it out yeah. at some I mean, point. I guess I'll just watch it after <laughs> after this is over, but Broncos Texans. We both had the Broncos. Yeah. So we were right on this one, but one right. it wasn't pretty. No, it was not. Russell Wilson and the Broncos offense got booed at home. In, in his in his home debut. Yeah. Bad look. Um I mean they lost to the Seahawks last week, which is a big yikes. Uh and they barely squeaked it out against the Texans. Which is another big yikes. Yeah. It's like you guys are projected you're in the best division in football. You're projected to be a contender in that division. Contender and, for the Super Bowl. Yeah, contender for the Super Bowl even. And you can't you can't beat the Seahawks and you can barely beat the Texans? I do think it's early and they have enough time. Like it, it's his first year with the team. They have time to mesh and yeah. get it better. But it is concerning. Yeah, but you want to talk about poor coaching. Broncos coach? Oh my goodness. Looking bad. Like last week, he single handedly kind of lost them the game on yeah. his end of the game, game clock management and play calls. And this week, I, I wasn't sure of the this whole week, thing. This week, same deal. They literally used all three timeouts within one drive. Really? Yeah. Because like the last drive or what? No, just like middle of the game. <laughs> they used all three timeouts because they kept on the clock kept winding down, play clock was winding down. Oh, timeout. Hey. Run a play, get sacked. Oh, no. Drop the punter out there. Oh, no, timeout. We're running out of time. I mean, hey, I'll take him over Matt Rule. Come to come to Yes! Matt Rule at least knows how to call timeouts, allegedly. He didn't ice Cade York last week. The rookie kicker for 58 yards. But the big brain. I think he thought. <laughs> I think he was thinking, oh, Cade York is going to think that I'm going to ice him. think I'm going to ice him, but then I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's out, he's out here playing... Chess when everyone else is playing checkers. Played a 4D chess out here. Everyone else is playing. <laughs> Until go-pick. he's looking for a job in two weeks. <laughs> Nebraska. Here you're looking for Nebraska. A coach. I heard. I heard you have a uh, an opening. Matt Rule is. <laughs> Matt Rule is. Matt Rule is going to be an option in about a week and a half. So we can hire hire Urban Meyer. Never know. This this next game another crazy comeback. Yeah, for real. Raiders Cardinals. It was twenty nothing. All Raiders first half, and then the foul. Uh, the foul. I meant Cardinals. Cardinals. Just turned it on and looked incredible, and like they they had a two point conversion play where Kyler Murray just scrambled around. It literally lasted for twenty two seconds. It literally, he I, ran eighty five yards. Know, I was gonna say that he ran eighty five yards in one play on a two point conversion. It's not even yes. like it was an eighty five yard. It was a two point conversion, and he ran eighty five yeah. yards. You're on the you're on the two yard line, and your quarterback runs for eighty five yards. I can't believe there was Crazy. no holding penalty on that. I know, play. right? That's that's the thing is as soon as your quarterback gets out of the pocket. And then comes back in. It's like immediately the flags start yes. flying because you know there's a holding call. I was yeah, but then it goes to overtime. Cardinals get the ball. They go down. Didn't do anything. It went for on fourth and didn't get it. So the Raiders got it. They moved down. Hunter Renfro fumbles. The Raiders recover. Three plays later, Hunter Renfro fumbles again. Cardinals pick it up, take it down for a walk off fumble. What do you want to call it? Fumble six. Scoop and score. Like 70, like 60, 70 yard scoop and score. And you are really distracting me right now. Sorry, Debbie's giving me like vague hand motions. He's good now? Okay, I can continue what I was saying. Okay. Like a 60, 70 yard scoop and score for the win was wild. But did you see when he, when he picked it up and was running down the sideline? Literally like, he almost let go of it before he was in the end zone. Did mm-hmm. you see that? That's what they were yeah. reviewing at the end of the game. He was like, the end zone was like, Right here, and he was like right here, and he like chucked the ball forward out of the end zone. And they were reviewing it because if he wasn't in the end zone, that's a safety, and they would have just lost the game on that. You know how incredible that would have been. That would have been the that guy would have been cut tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been cut. It would have been the play of the year. It would have been incredible. I would have loved that. I was so hoping much. so bad that it was going to get overturned and be a safety because that would have been that would have been the hilarious, funniest thing ever. But I mean, it was a good play. It was a good hit by Isaiah Simmons. Yeah, been kind of. Sleeping for a while, been not anywhere on that defense, and all of a sudden comes out of nowhere for the hit. But you know, good on good on the Cardinals. Hopefully, Hunter Renfro is okay. I know he was like being evaluated for a concussion, 
and hopefully his hands are okay because clearly, <laughs> because clearly, get clearly he can't ball. hold on to a football. But, you know, yeah. I think the Raiders are real all right. It is a little concerning, though. 0-2 in that division. Mm-hmm. It's going to be rough. Yeah. 0-2, two teams uh, have played really bad, that being the uh, Raiders and Broncos. And two teams played really good, that being the Chargers and Chiefs. Yeah. So I think we know which way that division is going to go <laughs> if we continue with this trend. Yeah. And then this one, we were also both wrong. We both yeah. went with our gut and picked the Seahawks over the Niners, which sounded crazy at the time, and it was crazy. Because crazy. the Seahawks kind of just, like, got obliterated. Yeah. The, the, the uh, storyline of this game, obviously, probably the storyline of the week, is Trey Lance yeah. broke his ankle, and he's going to have, or he, today he had season-ending surgery and is out for the season. Yep, he's gone. So, there goes that... Super Bowl, I mean, it could happen, but yeah. I said Trey Lance is going to take the Niners over the hump and they're going to go to the Super Bowl and <laughs> win that division and win, not win the Super Bowl, but go to the Super Bowl. Oh. Looks like Jimmy G is just going to have to do it again. But. Jimmy G, yeah. Good old Jimmy G. He's back in action. I'm, I'm sure the Niners are happy that they kept him, though. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> they are rejoicing. Now, here's the thing. I keep seeing that the Niners were probably thinking to themselves, oh, we're going to keep Jimmy G, and then someone's going to get hurt, and we're going to trade Jimmy G away for (laughs) crazy money and crazy players, and oh boy, do we have them now. Turns out it was their team that needed Jimmy Mm G, and I'm sure they're real happy they kept him. I saw this thing, and it was like, well, when they had Trey Lance in, they were just running it with Trey Lance, which, like, they almost like they were trying to run him to the ground, which I highly doubt, but people are like, I wonder if the Niners, like, don't like, like, or like, he's not good, like, but we can't just, like, not play our... We can't say that, We can't not play our third overall pick who we traded multiple picks to trade up for. So let's run him to the ground and get him hurt and then bring in Jimmy G, which I'm, I really doubt that, but that's what people are like conspiring about. But yeah, somebody told I me mean, they didn't do that. Hopefully Trey Lance comes back next year and is great. I really think he's a great quarterback. Hopefully he is. Yeah. He's played a whopping total of five quarters of football as in his last like four years of life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. But, but you know, Seahawks showed yeah. who they really are. Which is not a good. Team. Which is not good. They showed that last week was a fluke, and that they were playing the Broncos, who haven't looked great. So Geno true. Smith is just an average quarterback. Yeah. And the last game, the last game of uh, Sunday's lineup was the uh, Bears against the Packers. Aaron Rodgers proves that he's still. Yeah, I was owns just about to Bears. say that. <laughs> not really a contest. Bears they jumped around, jumped out, and scored yeah, opening drive, and I was like. So maybe this maybe game. this Bears team is like legit. Like they won last week, and if they beat the Packers, I mean, either the Packers are fraught, like they're done, or the Bears are legit. And then that was it. Yeah, the Packers. Then, yeah. I mean, so they ran the ball a lot. The Packers did, which is fair enough because between them and the Browns, it's like which one, which team has the better running duo? And I might be leaning towards Green Bay because yeah. AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones went absolutely berserk last night, especially Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones did great. But their running duo was incredible. Um, I still think the Browns have a better duo. And I think so, just because both running backs on the Browns are explosive, whereas Aaron Jones is really the only explosive back on the Packers. But that's for another day. Right. Regardless, yeah. Aaron Rodgers finally you know, got his receivers to catch the ball, gave it to Randall Cobb a whole lot. His rookie receivers did not see the ball the entire game. Yeah, congrats Aaron Rodgers on the win. I mean, now you, I, like I said last week, they lost week one, but they lost week one bad last year too, mm-hmm. showing that they should be fine, like they can play football. But Aaron Rodgers, you have been demoted to bench on my fantasy football team after a total of 20 points on the season. <laughs> and Tua has, yeah, Debbie has him too. Are you going to bench him or are you going to keep starting him? Yeah. We all three have Aaron Rodgers. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> we all three have Aaron Rodgers in three different leagues. Let's yeah, go. but Tua is now my starter. So Carson oh. Wentz is now one of my starters. <laughs> hopefully Tua can keep this up, and hopefully Aaron Rodgers plays good, but doesn't make me regret that. But yeah, Anything else you want to say about the week? Going into next week or anything? About tonight's games or something? About tonight's game? Uh, go Justin Jefferson. I need him to go absolutely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the Vikings-Eagles game. I think, yeah, that be, should be a good I think it'll one. be a lot of fun. Yeah, both two really good teams. Hopefully it should be a shootout. I kind of like how they're doing the two Monday night games, too. I don't like it. You don't? No, because the uh, Texans-Bills is at, like, what, 7-15? And then Texans, the, uh, Titans-Bills. Or Titans-Bills, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, it's right now. Right, and then this one's at, like, 8-20. So, like, you have to pick which game you want to watch. Oh, I think, I think 
it'll be timed decently. Maybe one wants a commercial, one won't be. Hopefully. Yeah, for those of us who don't have Red Zone, we're in trouble. Can no, Red Zone's only for Sundays. Never mind. We're all in trouble. <laughs> just, I don't like it. Just get two streamings. Get a computer and the TV. That's what I'll do. Kaden, you're a genius. You're also <laughs> addicted to football. <laughs> so, that was the recap of week two of the NFL season. Unfortunately, we only have 16 more weeks to go, but we're not going to look sad. at that. We're not going to look at that right now. We're going to be thankful that we are in the present. So, these were the recaps of the week. Hope you enjoyed. Looking forward to next week, next Friday when we yes. pick our next games. Yeah. And uh for an update of me and Austin's correct picks. I am sitting at 16 correct picks and Austin is sitting at 10. Yeah. So last the gap week last widened. week right last week I was up by 4. Yeah. And now I'm up by 6. So that means I got <laughs> hey, two week, more right than you. Week of comebacks. I have this one in the bag. Don't worry guys. We're making an epic comeback. This was this is our last net loss of the season. <laughs> Austin might have to go start doing some like research or something because <laughs> 10 picks in two weeks between a total of 32 games. Hey, you're at 50%. I'm at 50%. Yeah, 50%. That's actually pretty decent. I mean, it's better than whatever you're at. You're at like, <laughs> what, 10%? No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> quick math from Gaten. Quick math, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully my math teacher is not watching this. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm at like 30%. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant to say. Because I was thinking of like the 30 and then like yeah, 30, but Genius. Yeah. So thank you for listening to this episode of the K&A Football Podcast. Stay tuned for this Friday when we do our week three pickums. See you Friday. Thank you for watching another episode of K and A Football. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and you can listen to our podcast wherever you get your podcast. If you want to like to listen to our last video, click literally just click our page and go to it. You're already on the page. It's not that hard. Just go find it. Peace. <laughs>